This is Joseph Coco. I'm at Memphis Comic and Fantasy Convention uh, 2014 on behalf of Becca Hilburn's Art Process uh, Art Process Review Blog. Keep on trucking out of soup. If you could introduce yourself, Giorgio. Hello, I'm Giorgio Brooks. I'm okay. a senior at Memphis College of Art. Awesome. And what's bringing you to the convention? Well, besides the fact that I am local, I recently started tabling at conventions and kind of, you know, promoting my comics and such. Okay. And uh, the Phoenix Scroll was originally a, a, a web comic. Can you tell me about uh, how you decided to go about moving into a print comic? Uh, yeah. I actually kind of intended from the beginning to get it into print. I just had to finish all the pages first. Yeah. And it's just convenient. It's nice to try to build a fan base releasing it online. Right. Was the idea. Okay. Because uh, thanks to having it online, I have a few people that are really interested in it and would like a physical book. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people who are interested in, in buying the, the physical printed copy just because they know they have to support their artists and want to continue seeing it. Right. And there there seems to be a falling uh, away of uh, people producing um, uh, manga-influenced comics in, in the United States. Uh, can you tell me a little bit? I know a lot of your a lot of you read a lot of manga. Uh, what are some of your influences that that went into the style of uh, Phoenix Scroll? Uh, first and foremost, I was into One Piece a lot. I still am. But I remember a few years ago, back when I was still developing. Well, I'm still developing now, but back then it was just kind of a carbon copy of One Piece. But since then, I started checking out other comics as well instead of just manga. And I have expanded my sphere of influence. So, for one thing, I was drawn to the way people are rendered in Legend of Korra. Such as yes. how they actually draw the noses and kind of proportion them like real people. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. So Korra definitely has a, a bit of anime in it, but it's not actually produced in, in Japan, so it's not considered an anime. Um, so the the Phoenix Scroll, how many uh, volumes do you see it uh, being? Well, the Phoenix Scroll is just a one shot. Oh, okay. Sorry. So there won't be any more to it. Okay. Uh, so what are what are some of your next projects coming up that you're working on? Well, I have. Solving Zandro, which is going to be a webcomic I'm going to be starting next year, which is based on these characters. Okay. It involves a magical girl by the name of Zandra. Well, she's actually a mage. We used to call her a magical girl until I started developing it more. But it involves her and the antics that happen in the city. Weird occurrences such as horses appearing in parking lots with swag shades. These are very, uh, very normal stuff there. And um, I, uh, sorry, you're you're <laughs> rendering from left to right, which is a, a natural sort of American thing. But I know right. some people who try to be more OEL manga choose to uh, render the panels from right to left. Um, was that a decision that you consciously made, or you just naturally went from left to right because that's how Americans read? Uh, when I first started comics, like because I was in the manga and such, like most people that are in the manga and decide they want to do their own comic, it was going right to left. Like, yeah. Japanese comics, but that's often because a lot of people just feel like it needs to be Japanese, I guess. And yeah, like they don't they're really trying to either match as close as possible to the format. Right. <clears throat> and it's really just as you check out other stuff, you just kind of grow. Like, it doesn't have to be manga. Yeah. Just comics, <laughs> Eastern influence. I, I completely understand and agree, but there are some people who try to be as close to the format as possible, so I just wanted to get your insights on that. Um, uh, I see you, you brought some of the original pages to the convention. Was that uh, you were just hoping to have something large to draw people in, or were you hoping to sell some of the pages? Yeah, if you want all wide, I don't know. I wasn't really planning on selling any. If someone wanted one, that would be totally awesome, but <laughs> it often draws a lot of attention to people, so as they start looking through it, I can start telling them about the story and how the book is right next to it, and they usually start flipping through it. Yeah, and I know you also bring prints to the convention. Uh, I assume that's that's also an eye catcher for some of the people. Um, how did you get started with the prints? Were you just making work for yourself and you decided to print them and sell them at conventions, or it's something that uh, you're trying to build up uh, 
uh, repertoire of so you can have a, a, a larger presence, more things to sell at a convention. Well, because at these types of conventions, like where there is an anime focus, original stuff does just not do that well. Yeah. So my friends do help bring in some extra money and also draw attention to the table so I can kind of promote my original stuff more. Definitely. So it's helpful for that. Okay. And uh, can you tell me about uh, what sort of direction you're getting from your professors in terms of producing uh, comics with more of a manga influence style? Yeah, for the most part, um, the head of the comics department doesn't mind the style. As long as um, it's just like not about it being manga, because it's just style, you know? Yeah. It's all about like. But unfortunately, that, that style isn't necessarily. There's a stigma against the style in the U.S. Oh, at yeah. the moment, yeah. I would say. So it's not that universities. Most universities, I would say, don't dissuade people from using a manga style, but it's almost like you have to treat them differently because the way someone with a manga influence style would enter the industry of comics might be different than the way someone with a more superhero style would introduce would uh, get into the, the comic industry so I was just wondering if, if they were giving particular like different advice essentially to you because you have a manga influence style um, for the most part, it's not really that different especially since right now I'm more self-directed okay I'm uh, working on my own stories and usually they kind of go well to the manga community because it's like more manga-esque. Yeah. But I also try to kind of steer away from that with this story. Yeah. It's got a lot of black placement. So yeah. I, I definitely think that's um, a bit more leaning towards the American style. Um, so would you have any advice to someone who's considering attending uh, Memphis Comic and Fantasy convention for the first time? Yeah, for this one specifically, I'd say get a partner, because the tables are kind of pricey. Yeah, $150 for this crowd uh, just doesn't quite cut it. And where could we find your work online? You can find me on, oh, here, this is correct. Okay, yeah. at georgebooksart.tumblr.com. Okay. And I'm also on YouTube as Giorgio Brooks. I have a few videos there. And you're going to be publishing your future comics online as well, or you think you're going to move straight to uh, print with future comics? Uh, probably online and then print. Okay. All right, well, I hope you have a good convention. Thanks so much for talking to me. Yeah, sure.